In Season 1, Episode 1 of The Boys, The Name of the Game, Annie learns why you should never meet your heroes. Later, in Season 1's finale, You Found Me, Becca is confronted by her rapist. Both scenes are devastating and highlight how individuals in positions of power exploit, mistreat, and violate others. Both Becca and Annie are rightfully traumatized by their experience, but not defined by it. Their journeys to overcome these assaults highlight their strength and resilience. Annie proves that her traumatic experience does not diminish her inherent strengths, while Becca remains a strong mother despite daily reminders of her past trauma. Oftentimes, sexual assault in the boys is dealt with quite well. In the latest season, however, Huey, one of the main characters, is assaulted twice and both times the series fails to capture the intensity of these moments. No justice is given to the male victim, reaffirming an ongoing stereotype in the film industry where men being sexually assaulted is a laughing matter. Oh, and you, you, my friend, would be the belle of the ball. Don't drop the soap. Don't drop the soap. Michael, please. Okay, she's like, I don't want to go to jail. You, you know what happens to a handsome guy like me in jail? It rhymes with grape. It rhymes with grape. Oh, I tell you, Brian, all the rumors about dropping the soap are true. Really? Oh, yeah, you can't hold on to that thing to save your life. Oh, I was slipping all over the place, guys were laughing. Hey, there's a guy who couldn't hold on to the soap. Oh, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> a prominent feature of The Boys is its critique of shallow political correctness. They satire how large corporations constantly virtue signal to appear inclusive, progressive, and just, illustrating how null and void these attempts truly are. This makes for some very humorous moments. Vought's efforts at being anti-racist, for example, often end up being strikingly prejudiced and bigoted. In the arc of your character, this is your low point, right? Everybody's given up on you, you're all alone, until the coach swoops in and saves me from the ghetto. No, 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 you actually save each other. It's a very balanced narrative. All the sensitivity readers that we hired, they all agree. In Huey's assault scenes, they unfortunately do a horrible job at bringing his character justice, and they even become the thing they make fun of. In Season 4, Episode 6, Dirty Business, Huey is placed in a very precarious situation. Disguised as Web Weaver to collect intel, he also finds out why you should never meet your heroes. Now, the scene is somewhat complex. Huey was portraying himself as a consensual participant in the acts he was about to partake in, yet he wasn't a consenting member himself. But because of his appearance, he was assumed to be a consenting member given the nature of his situation. To focus on the depiction of the assault itself, let's ignore the fact that Huey was committing identity theft. This moment in the show is meant to be a laughing matter. The portrayal of this incident is supposed to be something the audience will find hilarious. That isn't my opinion, that was show writer Eric Kripke's intention. In a Variety interview, Kripke is asked this. Let's start with the Tech Knight sex dungeon part. Where did the idea come for it? And why bring Huey into this situation now, kicking him when he's down by having him sexually assaulted by his childhood hero after his dad just died? And responds with this. Well, that's a dark way to look at it. We view it as hilarious. Now, humor does have the potential to bring light to dark situations, but there's a very fine line between appropriately funny and disrespectful. The circumstances for this first assault were very unusual, but it was still assault. Huey's response to this experience is extremely short-lived. He is mainly reacting to the passing of his father. Rather than making a thoughtful, intense moment like they did with Annie and surprisingly, The Deep, they added to the already oversaturated stereotype that exists in media. If a man is mistreated, exploited, and violated, it is turned into a joke. The usually self-aware writers could have done better. But mistakes are mistakes. As long as they don't do it again, right? Well. They did it again. Both times deal with identity theft and both times are assault. Yet the response to the second incident is done so incredibly poorly. I would argue worse than the first. A shapeshifter has disguised herself as Huey's girlfriend and unsurprisingly, they have sex. This would be incredibly devastating. For the past 10 days, Huey has been living with an imposter. When he realizes this, he is horrified. This doesn't end up being a moment for Huey though. Huey, as the victim, has to defend the fact that he is a victim to Annie. After being sexually assaulted roughly 20 times by the shapeshifter, he is still the one defending himself. Annie literally victim blames Huey for not knowing the shapeshifter, who looks identical to his girlfriend and has all the same memories, isn't her. 
she proceeds to vilify Huey for his actions as if it is partially his fault. This reflects the lack of consideration men face in real life when they are victims of assault, abuse, and more, making the portrayal more problematic. Annie, also being a victim of assault, doesn't even give an ounce of empathy for Huey's circumstances. Rather than acknowledging how terrible their situations were and being there for each other, Huey has to beg for Annie's forgiveness. Does that make any sense to you? They wrote the scene as if Huey is at fault. The justification for Annie's anger is written even worse, and is hugely out of place for the boys. Since the series so frequently makes fun of shallow virtue signaling, how they dealt with this scene is incredibly hypocritical. Annie's anger is rooted in her opposition to gender norms established by the patriarchal arrangements of society. Huey enjoyed the fact that his girlfriend expressed more interest in him than usual. Therefore, it only logically follows that he must be a chauvinist who only wants an obedient girlfriend who seeks to please him numerous times a day. Men only want the perfect girl anyway. What disgusting pigs, am I right? The writers had an opportunity to deepen Annie and Huey's relationship through their shared suffering. Instead, they needlessly include a woke talking point in arguably the most horrible spot they could have. The whole problem the boys attacks is when political correctness is shallow and used to display some sort of moral high ground. Annie is quite literally given the moral high ground when she is articulating shallow politically correct rhetoric. And as long as you were getting laid, you didn't look too close. That's the Annie you want. Down to go down whenever the perfect girl. Not someone who is depressed or fucked up or comes with any complications. The writers not only failed to depict the gravity of both Huey's assaults, but they used the second incident as an opportunity to become something they tried to parody. There are, of course, negative gender norms for women. But there's also negative gender norms for men. For a series that attempts to break boundaries, this has to be one of the least self-aware things they could have done. Hopefully next season, Huey receives his well-deserved justice. These are some post-editing thoughts, and I don't know how I didn't realize this sooner. It is a hilarious contradiction. Annie is part of the Starlight House, which is basically a social justice organization. So, it's not even about the situation being out of character for the theme of the boys in terms of it being a satire for a lot of political correctness just being shallow. It's the fact that of all people they could have chosen, it was Annie, the person who is literally working for an organization who is supposed to be aware of issues going on in society. And she reaffirms these gender stereotypes in her little monologue to Huey, and then Huey has to defend himself. It is just so ridiculous. 